Bill Gates is one of the greatest minds in the world. His new book, How to Avoid a Climate Disaster, gives him an important overview of all the technologies needed to reduce carbon emissions to zero and point out the ones that are already available and the ones that still need to be de developed. The book is full of important insights about how we use energy today and how we need to rebuild present systems and make large investments to create a society without carbon emissions. Gates gives an optimistic view of the transformation and argues that the change will require a lot of work and heavy investment in new technologies, but will be made possible when only important investments are made and all the te necessary technologies are implemented that need to replace existing ones. The book is excellent, but naturally leaves some questions unanswered, such as, uh, it focuses on technology and innovations, but Gates does not mention the processes of change that need to be driven to accomplish the complicated transformation. These processes take many years to create an institute, whether it be the restructuring of one company or the development of a new one. This will be necessary in several of the in industries mentioned by Gates, and the outcome of them is very hard to predict and manage. Development of new technologies from early applications to full maturity often takes half a century or more. It is important to acknowledge how the focus of investment in development and implementation need to change through the different steps in the process. Gates also focuses entirely on the challenge of climate change, but this is not the only threat facing present generations. For two decades, independent oil experts have warned that oil production is likely to reach its peak in the next few years and start to decline. In a situation where e-mobility is still in its infancy, a decline in oil production will have severe effects on the productivity of countries and the ability of governments to, to secure the supply of life's necessities. Preparations for decline in oil production are urgently needed and no account of the future can be considered complete without taking it into account. And there are also some questions, of course, that remain unanswered. How do we get from the present lack of awareness about the tremendous challenges to an ex accepting consensus regarding the approach countries need to make, take to mitigate them? How to organize and finance the substantial development and implementation programs that need to be undertaken? And, for example, how to boil down the complex reasoning in Gates's book to straightforward decisions that need to be made by governments, company management teams, and voters in public elections? In conclusion, through any change process, miles of bookshelves need to be filled with books that analyze different aspects of the situation. So far, there are only a handful. And Gates' book is valuable addition, but it should not be seen as the definitive guide.